Hello everyone, this is Omar Alvarado of theparadiddler.com, the blog for all things drumming. Thanks for watching this video. This video is a first in a series of videos that will be explaining how to record great sounding and great looking drum covers with just your camcorder and Windows Movie Maker. For many drummers, that's all they have. They don't have any expensive equipment or fancy software. They just have their basic camcorder and Windows Movie Maker, which is a free video editing software that comes with Microsoft Windows. So how can you ensure that your videos look and sound really great? Well, this series of videos is going to help you to do that. Many songs that drummers choose to cover have the drumming begin right on the first note. And it has resulted difficult to synchronize when to start drumming right on the first note. How can you ensure that you will always start on the first note and not before and not after? And not like what's happening at the beginning of this video where the drummer was clutching around and couldn't just get it right when to start drumming. Well this video is going to show you exactly how to do that so that you can get it right every single time. There are many methods that one can implement to ensure that you start drumming right on the first beat of the song when the song requires it. In this video, we're going to show you the four items that you need to make this possible. Again, we want to make sure that we start drumming right on the first note, synchronized with the song. What are those four items? One item you need is the song itself, obviously. The second thing you need is some audio editing software and in this video we're going to be using Audacity. It's free software that you can download from the web. Next thing you need are some drumsticks. They don't have to be drumsticks, it could be anything that can make a sound but since we're making a drum cover it's only appropriate that we use drumsticks. And the final thing you need is a microphone connected to your computer. In my case right here I have a USB microphone that's plugged into my computer and that is more than adequate for what we need to do. So how can we put all these things together and have an end product where you'll be able to play right on the first note and be synchronized with the song and not play before or after but right spot on. The next few minutes we're going to be discussing how you can do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, in case we don't have it, is to get the Audacity audio editing software. To do that, let's go to our favorite browser, and we want to go to the following website, audacity.sourceforge.net. Click on the Other Downloads link, and the next page will show you the different versions of Audacity. In our case, we're going to click the 1.2.6 version of Windows. You want to click on the Audacity installer. Click Save File and run the installation file after it saves. I've already installed it on this computer so I won't run it in this video. If you need to, pause this video and I'll see you on the other side after you have Audacity installed. So here's the Audacity main screen. A couple of things we want to ensure is that our output and input devices are selected. Both our speakers and whatever microphone we have plugged in to the computer. Another place to check that those are selected properly is in the edit menu under preferences and devices. Here is the playback or output and input devices. The other thing we want to ensure is that we have the MP3 and FFmpeg libraries installed. This will allow us to manipulate the files we're going to be dealing with. For example, the MP3 export library, you'll want to click download 
and just follow the instructions on installing that library and follow the instructions also for the FF MPEG library. Okay, so back at the main screen, now we want to create the lead in click track that we're going to place at the beginning of the song that has the drumming starting right on the first note. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a couple of drumsticks, I'm going to press record, and I'm going to click to the beat of the song. The song I'm going to be demonstrating with is The Analog Kid by Rush. On that song, the drumming starts right on the first note. I know the beat of the song already, so I'm going to click to that beat. I'm going to record that for like five seconds or so, and I'm going to stop the recording. And that's all it is. As you can see, there was some extra time recorded, so if I don't want that, I can just select that amount of time and hit the delete key on my keyboard. I could do the same thing for the beginning as well, but it's not necessary. We can press play to hear what it sounded like. Okay, so that sounded okay. Now what we want to do is import the song that we're going to be playing to. The way to do that is to click File, highlight Import, and click Audio. In my case, the song is on my desktop. So I'm going to click it, and I'm going to click Open. So here we have a graphic representation of both audio tracks, both the click track that we recorded and also the song, The Analog Kid. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on these files. It will make it easier to manipulate them. So here we have the last click that we recorded and on the song here is the first beat. We can tell because of the way the audio, or the visual of the audio spikes. What I want to do is drag this part, this song, to the right so that the first beat of the song is right after the last click in beat, in time. The way to do that is to use the time shift tool. So I'm going to click that, then I'm going to come down to the song, and I'm going to click and drag to the right the song. And I'm going to position the first beat of the song after the last click. That's probably the right spot there. So I'm going to press play and see how it sounds. If you notice, the song started a little too late. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it back a little bit to the left, a little bit closer to the last click. And I'm going to play it again. That sounded just about right. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close enough. As close as you can get it. You can control the volume of the click. If you think it's a little too loud, you can use this gain feature, which is actually the volume, and you can just turn it down as much as you want. If you want to hear how it sounds, you can press play again. If it's a little too low, you can always turn it back up. I'm going to bring it back up a little bit, and I'm going to leave it just like that. Now we can save the new audio as one so that this audio will have the click track at the beginning which will lead you in to the first beat of the song. So I'm going to click File and I'm going to click Export 
and I'm going to save it in the same location as my original file. So I'm going to click it so that it fills in the file name and I'm going to name it something different so it's not overridden. The Analog Kid 2. Before we click Save, we want to click Options and we want to make sure that the quality is at least 128 kbps. That way it'll sound good enough for when we're playing to it. But in our final mix, when we mix the video of our drumming with the song, we want to use the highest quality song in the final mix. So I'm going to click OK, leaving everything else the same. And I'm going to click Save. You can leave the metadata as is or edit it if you like. And also, you can bypass this warning, which is really informational more than anything else. And after a few seconds, the song will export. And there it is. We can close Audacity now. If you like, you can save what you just did as a project. I'm going to opt not to do that at this time. So here's my song, the Analog Kid 2 that I just created. I'm going to put it next to the original song. Just so I can hear what it sounds like, I'm going to double click it and play the first few seconds. As you can see, you can hear the click track just clearly, and it leads you right into the first beat of the song. So when you're hearing it on your headphones, or whatever listening device you're using, you'll start playing right exactly on the first beat. Not before and not after, because the lead and click track leads you right into the first beat. And that's it. Now you know how you can ensure that when you play those songs where the drumming starts right on the first note, you can hit that note synchronized every single time. And that little trick, you don't always have to use it for the beginning of the song. If there's any part of the song where timing is an issue for you, you might find it difficult to count at the point where that beat starts, where the drumming starts. You can do another click track recording and just use Audacity to place that click track anywhere in the song that you need it. You'll know that in the final result, in the final mixing, you'll be using the audio without the click track and you'll be playing just right every time. This method can be used also for those who don't want to hear a click throughout the entire song. It might be a little bothersome for some. You can use the click track recording or what I call the lead-in click track so that you don't have to hear it throughout the whole song only in the parts that you need it. There will be more videos in this series on how to record drum covers using just your camcorder and Windows Movie Maker. You can subscribe to theparadiddler.com's free newsletter so that you can be privy to when those videos come out. This is Omar Alvarado of theparadiddler.com and I'll see you in the next video.